Welcome to the video tutorial about Namba. You should have your Jupyter Notebook running and um, be inside the SDSC Summer Institute 2021 folder with all of the material. So if you get into the Python for HPC folder and then lesson zero about Namba, and then you can open the Namba Basics uh, Jupyter Notebook the first. Namba is a just-in-time compiler of Python functions. So what it does is takes um, input functions which are written in plain Python or using NumPy and turns them into machine code that's very fast. It's compiled code, so it's very similar to the performance of C and Fortran. And, uh, it's the, same, it's the same technology which underlies uh, Julia. The difference is that while Julia, the whole language is just in time compiled, with Python, of course, this is a later addition. And so what it does is you just choose manually which functions you want to optimize, which of course are going to be the most computational intensive functions, so where you are manipulating large arrays, doing a lot of computations. So the, those inner loop you want to optimize with number. So let's take a look at how this works in this first Jupyter notebook. So the simpler way to use number is to use the JIT decorator. So JIT stands for just in time. And that means that this function, once has this decorator on top, it's going to be automatically compiled by uh, Namba the first time which it's called. Okay, so it, the function itself doesn't need to have anything um, special. Um, what's important is that we don't want to use uh, Python objects inside the function. Otherwise, Namba is not able to optimize it. So make sure you use arrays, NumPy arrays are fine, lists, dictionary, um, but not complicated custom objects that you have created. And so what you do is you just call it normally and this function works very much like any other function is under the hood that this function is optimized. So if we, uh, for example, test for uh, performance, we see that these um, functions run uh, very, very fast. And whenever you call the decorator of the JIT decorator, this uh, creates the compiled function. The compiled function has also a reference to the original function, this uh, dot pyfunc, and so that we can compare which what, which is the performance. So you see here is microseconds, here is nanoseconds. So it's um, a, a, a big speed up, and all of this is obtained by using the JIT decorator with no Python equals true. There is another way of using number, which is uh, having no Python equal false, that allows you to use Python objects inside, but that prevents number for doing most of the optimization. So it's generally not very useful, especially in scientific computing. We want to use always no Python equal true. And OK, so we have compared this. But of course, we are comparing a function uh, which has loops, right? We have a loop on an array. And we would never implement it this way. We generally never use loops in Python in scientific computing because we know that for our purposes, is always too slow. And so. Uh, we would implement it in NumPy. So let's see how this looks in NumPy. Of course, this is now everything is an array. And uh, what's interesting is that even in this case, 
um, Namba is way faster. So you see this is still in the microseconds range while Namba was nanoseconds. So the important difference is to understand is that beside compiling to machine speed, the other thing is that most of the time Namba is able to pack all of the computation in one pass and, and not create temporary arrays. So the worst thing about using NumPy is that it's always creating a new array. So here, for example, you have A, which is an array, and then NumPy spends time to create another array, which is np.diagonal of that, and then creates another array, which is the arc tangent, the hyperbolic tangent of that and then does the sum. And so there's all those temporary um, arrays that are wasting performance. And not only that, is also having high and quite difficult to predict memory consumption. And we get rid of all of this with Namba, which can do a low level computation. And uh, um, let's see down here, another example of what we can use. And so you see again here that we are doing for loops. There's no problem because those for loops are going to be optimized. Something else that we see here is that we are creating a optimized function here and we are calling it for from this other function. So uh, you can also uh, chain those um, Optimize functions. Of course, you what you cannot do is from a compiled function call a function which is not optimized because uh, that would um, not be supported. 